A very warm welcome to our 9.30 service from St. John's in Copthorne this morning. To those of you here in church and all of you joining online, wherever you may be, on this fourth Sunday of Easter. My name is Roz and I am leading the service this morning with my husband Mike. We hope that you will receive strength and comfort from sharing in our worship today. The theme of today's service is My God Has Set Me Free. While we are all looking forward to the restoration of the freedoms that have been restricted during the COVID ep epidemic, the reading you will hear today from Paul's letter to the Romans tells us that we are always free as the law of the Spirit has set us free from the law of sin and death. Let us begin our worship with a prayer. O oh God, you have made us free to choose you and love you. Thank you for freeing us from fear. Help us to show your love to each person we meet today and every day. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn is Crown Him with Many Crowns. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. 
let's say, the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us, so let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We've lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We've lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We've lived by, for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. And may the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. So we stand as we say the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And Lord, as we come and focus on being set free in you, in your Son, Jesus. We pray that you will enlighten our hearts later today. Amen. Amen. Please take a seat as um, Ross or Mike will start with our first reading. The first reading today is taken from the letter of Paul to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 1 to 4. Life through the Spirit. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ, because through Jesus Christ, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do, because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh but according to the spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Luke chapter 22, verses 15 to 17. For I will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. 
you will be betrayed even by parents, brothers and sisters, relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. Everyone will hate you because of me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. And may the words of my mouth and our thoughts and meditations of our heart be pleasing to you. Lord, you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Take a seat. Our second reading from the Gospel of Luke is really relevant to, it's almost part of the Beatitudes, to, actually a part of the end time uh, quote that Jesus is saying. And... Um, and are relevant especially for the persecuted church because you will be put to death for my name. I don't know if we experienced that as severely in our countries. I doubt it. In the past, we probably have had some people put to death because of Christ. Uh, but there is something contradicting in that reading. If you would read the, the verse that follows that, it says that not a hair of your head will be harmed. So, on the one hand, we see that we can be put to death because we follow Christ, and then Christ is saying, but do not worry, not the hair of your head will be harmed. What does he mean with that? If there is, on the one hand, that sacrifice, and on the other hand, that salvation. And I think the, the reading for today and the theme for today will probably give us a bit more of an enlightenment of a, a, a revelation, hopefully. Um, so, um, the reading from, the, gospel, from the, the book of Romans, chapter 8, is a reading that follows chapter 5, 6, and 7, obviously, but it's really Paul talking about that new life in Christ. And Paul uses in those chapters the word law an awful lot. And he doesn't mean exactly the same. So, when he used the word law, sometimes he uses it as a Ten Commandments, Sometimes he uses it as a state of living we are in. So he says sometimes the law of the flesh. In other words, the law or the reality of our broken bodies, the reality of our sinful nature, the reality of our perishable flesh or perishable body. That's what he means when he says the law of the flesh. When he says the law of the spirit, he says what it, that means is our imperishable body, our spiritual living, the state of where we are in when we are set free in Christ. And so it is sometimes a tough reading when you see the word law and you're not always understanding or aware of the context. Um, so I hope that today, uh, me using some illustrations, that will become clearer what it means to live free and not in the law of the flesh, which is not freedom. Just to give you one bit of an example, and that is that when um, Paul is saying that the law in the flesh was not being able to create that freedom, he does initially talk about the law of God. He talks in this sentence about the Ten Commandments. And he's saying that the Ten Commandments supposedly should give freedom, did not give freedom but the opposite, created death within us. So imagine when Moses is there speaking to the people of Israel, he says, do this and live. That's what he says. It's his final speech in Deuteronomy. He saying, keep this law, do this and live. And Paul is saying here that it just produces death. And what he means is that he discovers, Paul in himself, that the good he wants to do, evil is right behind. And so the Ten Commandments, or the full law of God, didn't produce life. It produces death, because it produces condemnation. Because we are all full to meet the criteria. We all have sinned, the Bible says. And if you look in your own life, you probably will not and say, yes, that's me. And so, so the requirement of the law produces death because when we sin, we are condemned to death. 
That's the reality. We are not failing. We are failing to be the people God wants us to be. And that's an awful reality for us. And we all know and experience now as we speak. We experience dying. We experience suffering. We experience sin. We experience failing. And he says then that in Christ Jesus, who came in the flesh, in a perishable body, God condemned all the sin, yours and mine, so that we can now live by the law of the Spirit. So the flesh which was vulnerable, in the flesh as we condemned, God himself took on flesh and took on our sin so that we can live in that spirit of freedom. Now let me illustrate this with a story from my past. About 15 years ago, I used to work in a region called Darfur, which is in West Sudan, well, northwest of the Sudan. At that time, the country was one country. Currently, it's split in two in South Sudan and the Republic of Sudan, which is the north part of the Sudan. And in that region, uh, there was a terrible conflict taking place. And the conflict is actually still there. It hasn't really uh, disappeared, so to say. And the conflict was between if you simplify it between nomadic tribes and farming tribes, both Arabic speaking, both Arabic type of cultures, but the nomadic ones much more from a camel herding, horse riding point of view, and the other ones from a settlement point of view. But it was very fragmented because internally there was conflicts and the government used the nomadic Janjaweed type of tribe to burn down villages that were belonging to the farmers, promising them land to settle if they helped the rebellion because some of the farmers in that region resisted the government. And that created this terrible conflict. And those of you who remember it, in 2003, 4, and 5, and 6, it was much more in the news. In 2004, I went to that region and I worked there up to 2006, Kirsty as well, my wife, and we had a whole team a big team, and one of my team members was a nurse, her name was Alison, and then we had a very large team of Sudanese people working for us, which we locally recruited, and an even larger team of volunteers. The scope was really significant. So we had about 200, 2,000 volunteers, 150 staff members, and then I run the water program, and then later run the whole of the program. But when I run the water program, I had one employee a lo local Sudanese guy, his name was Yakub, working for me. Now he was from the nomadic tribe, which was a little bit unusual because they could be perceived as these Janja wheat fighters. But I was quite glad that I had him on my team because if we were traveling to regions and ambushes were regularly there, we were exposed to a lot of danger. I thought if Yakub sits beside me, we might find a way through. We might have a, a way out of this. And um, and Jakub invited me for his wedding day at some point, which was, again, a slightly extraordinary event. So we came to his tribe, his village, and, uh, and there was a lot of celebration. Horse riding, horse racing as well, between two kind of um, um, young guys. And Alison, the nurse who worked with me, she used to ride horses at home. But when you are a Westerner and when you're an aid worker, you are reserved in the way you live your life in a country that has very different laws, very different local practices. You don't wear trousers as a woman. You, especially in that region, you don't really drink alcohol at all because it's not, it's not appropriate in that country. So you, you just uh, want to love the people and you abide by some of the local customs and law. But in the meantime, you're also a different person. You're almost freer, so to say, in what you are allowed to do personally, but in that country that is a restriction, so to say. It is unthinkable in that culture that a woman would ride a bike, a motorcycle, or ride a horse. They don't. It's not what they do. It's not their practice. So Alison loved horses, but someone, some of the Sudanese staff, his name was Sakaraya, he knew about a love for horses, and he was invited as well on that wedding, and he said, would you like to race my horse? 
And she thought, well, she knew that that would be just a non-customary thing to do, even though as a Westerner, you get much more away with it because they know you're a different culture, you're not a Muslim, you're not abiding to kind of local practices. So she said, no, because the right thing to do is to say, no, you're polite. Then he asked again, and she said, no. <clears throat> and he asked a third time, and then it becomes not polite to say no, because then you mean it's serious. It's a bit like in an English culture, not in a Dutch culture. In an English culture, do you need me to help with anything? No, 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 we're all fine. Are you sure? You, don't, you, kind of, you have this kind of to and fro. Let me know if there's anything I need to do. Is that always meant, or is it just politeness? So in that kind of culture, you have a politeness. But then when it's the third time, you might want to say yes. She said, OK, I will do. And so she, ran, she raced the horse with some of the other local tribe kind, and she won. She was incredibly fast. She was a very good horse rider. So there was tremendous cheering, and obviously they clapped, and they found it ecstatically funny that a woman won the horse race because it was this fast race. We didn't think much of it as having some fun and having some relief in the middle of what well, is a complex region, a complex crisis. And this was just a very different moment being invited on a wedding. Two years later, in a different village, Alison was on a field trip setting up a clinic. And on her trip, she got stopped and some local people came and had a chat. And one of the girls, who was a teenager, said, you're Alison, aren't you? It was a very different village. And she said, yes, I'm Alison. She said, well, I was invited on the wedding quite a while ago. He said, and when you rode the horse, I realized that I could do things more than I was used to. I knew that we could do much more. And I want to study a doctor because you inspired me so much with riding that horse. There was a new world opened up. And see that this young girl said this, obviously, in Arabic. And Alison was quite good in Arabic. Me, rather less so. Kirsty was even better. And I normally am the one who speaks uh, local languages easier. But in this case, my Arabic was poorly. So, <clears throat> so you mentioned that to Alex, and Alex retold me the story. The reason I'm sharing this with you, because I want you to imagine this in an example where there is a particular local custom and law that keeps you underneath, that keeps you enslaved to a reality, what you think is the only reality. But when you then get a revelation that there is more and you can do more, then you can have a spirit of freedom and a desire to live differently. Our reading is precisely about this. Our reading is we don't earn heaven by living a life of abiding by the law because we fail to do that, is what Paul was saying. We already failed to do that. He said there is a new life. Jesus Christ offers that life of freedom because he took your sin and now you can live with the spirit of freedom. The law of the spirit, he calls it. As that girl saw a new reality, she wanted to live that new reality. Now, that does not mean that her current reality is quite restrictive. In other words, it doesn't mean that your reality is still quite restrictive. You still are sinning. Every day, I can tell you. Every moment of the day, you're failing. Even if you don't feel you do, you do. So Paul says, so we therefore keep on sinning because there's no hope. Far from it. Because we have a new spirit, we can live in freedom. So live according to that spirit. Do not sin because you have already a new reality. The verse in Romans 8 verse 1 says, Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ, you and me, there is no condemnation, even the sin that you're about to do later, even the crumpiness, even the irritation with your family, even the mistakes that you will be making. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. What there is, is conviction to not live any longer in sin. And that is very different. Because it means we accept the fact that we live by the law of the Spirit. 
we are already forgiven because Christ already took on our condemnation in his flesh so that you and I live in freedom. And I want you to live in freedom. I want you to come to Holy Communion without guilt. I want you to come. I am a new creation. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. That is your reality, even when your flesh, when your perishable body demonstrates at times a different one. That doesn't mean we want to live in sin. It means that we want to live according to the life of the Spirit, the law of the Spirit, so that the world will see that we have something else to offer, and that something else is Jesus. Amen. Shall we stand? My brothers and sisters in Christ, I, I invite you to affirm your faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scripture. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scripture. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received, and this we believe. Amen. Please sit or kneel for the intercessions. At the end of each section, I will say, Jesus, Lord of life, and the response is, in your mercy, hear us. After the concluding prayer, the response is, accept our prayers and be with us always. Amen. Jesus, light of the world, bring the light and peace of your gospel to the nations to free us from doubts about the outcomes from the pandemic and in this time of uncertainty about world affairs. To those nations where Christianity is under threat, especially in Egypt, Nigeria and China. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, bread of life, give food to the hungry, to the poor and homeless, to refugees, and especially those starving in Central and East Africa, fleeing drought and conflicts. Set them free and nourish us all with your word. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, our way, our truth, our life. Be with us and all who follow you in the way. Especially all who worship here and help us to show your way to all who we meet in our daily lives. We give thanks and pray for Her Majesty the Queen in her time of mourning. Deepen our appreciation of your truth and fill us with your life. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, good shepherd, who gave your life for the sheep, recover the straggler, bind up the injured, strengthen the sick, especially all those suffering from the pandemic and their families and friends, and now especially all those in India, all those tending the sick in the NHS, in care homes and at home. And we ask 
that you lead the healthy and strong to new pastures. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, the resurrection and the life, we give you thanks for all who have lived and believed in you. For Ray Wiggin, a faithful member of our congregation who died last week, and for Lillian Taylor, who died this morning, and all who have died during the pandemic. Raise us with them to eternal life. Jesus, Lord of life, accept our prayers and be with us always. Amen. Can I invite you to stand for our peace? <clears throat> the risen Christ name, um, came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. And they were glad and when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. Amen. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Risen Lord Jesus Christ, we believe you and all that we've heard is true. And when we break bread, may we recognize you as the fire that burns within us and that we may bring light to your world. Amen. The Lord is here. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It's right to praise you. Father, Lord of all creation, in your love you made us for yourself. And when we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice of sin. On the night that he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit. That this bread and this wine Maybe to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. <clears throat> and with the whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please do take a seat. Rejoicing in God's new creation as we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. The body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. In a moment I will come and distribute communion. Please do stand if you have not received yet. And if you feel you don't want to receive, just remain seated so I know the difference. And if you have received, you can sit down as well. That will be helpful. Thank you.
Let's say the post-communion collect together. God of truth, <clears throat> we have seen with our eyes and touched with our hands the bread of life. Strengthen our faith that we may grow in love for you and for each other. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand for the blessing. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remains with you always. Amen. Amen. Please to take a seat for our last hymn. Thank you for joining in our worship this morning. We hope the words you have heard will bring freedom for your soul and that they will strengthen and comfort you through the week. We wish you and your loved ones good health and look forward to welcoming you again next Sunday. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, alleluia.